In this section of the Introduction to Monetary Policy online lesson, we're going to be looking at the transmission mechanism for interest rates. So first of all, what is a transmission mechanism? Well, it's just a, how a change in one thing causes a change in something else, a step-by-step -step detail. So we're going to be looking at how a change in interest rates finally affects the inflation rate. But before we do, why don't you have a go at thinking about the following transmission mechanisms? Try and write out a flow chart of every single step by step detail for each of three, these three examples. Pause the video, have a go, and then I'll join you in a moment. So hopefully you've had some fun thinking about those different flowcharts, how you'd get from one end to the other. Let's have a look and see what happens with interest rates. OK, we have a change in interest rates. So Andrew Bailey and the Monetary Policy Committee decide to change interest rates. And it has four main channels of impact. Impact on consumer spending, impact on investment spending by firms, impact on the exchange rates and trade, and impact on asset prices. And here we're talking about share prices, we're talking about financial assets, bonds, and so forth. All of those four channels will have an impact on aggregate demand, which in turn has an impact on inflation. Now we're gonna have a look at each of those in more detail, each of those four chains in more detail. So first of all, we're going to consider the impact of interest rate changes on consumer spending. And we're going to look, first of all, at a rise in interest rates. So if we have a rise in interest rates, it's going to make it more expensive for consumers to borrow to perhaps pay for sofas or TVs or new cars. And so there's going to be less incentive to borrow, which will reduce consumption as part of aggregate demand, shifting the aggregate demand curve to the left, and that will reduce inflationary pressure. If interest rates rise, there'll be more reward for saving. So consumers might be more inclined to put away more of their disposable income into savings, which again means there's less to spend, which will reduce consumption, reduce aggregate demand, causing falling inflationary pressure. The third channel for consumer spending is the effect on variable rate mortgages. So most of us have got mortgages. Um, if we have a rate rise, so we have to pay more each month on our mortgage, we will have less discretionary income. So that's income after taxes and including benefits will give us disposable income. And then from our disposable income, we need to take all the important things we cannot not pay. So things like mortgage, rent, council tax, electricity, gas bills. Once all that's taken away, we then have discretionary income. If we've got less discretionary income because we're paying more on our mortgage, then we will be spending less in shops and in uh, on the Internet. So consumption will fall aggregate demand will fall, there will be reduction in inflationary pressure. Now let's look at the effect of interest rates on investment. So remember investment in economics has a very different meaning than it has in the newspapers and in general parlance, i.e. how we all chat to each other. Investment is an increase in capital. So investment is capital spending by firms firms buying capital equipment. When you hear in the newspapers that uh, so-and-so has invested in their savings account, that is incorrect. Consumers cannot invest, households cannot invest, only firms invest. So we now need to look at a transmission process for firms thinking about higher interest rates. So first and foremost, exactly the same as for consumers, it's more expensive to borrow from banks. So fewer business loans are taken out, which means we'll have a falling investment spending, which means investment as part of aggregate demand will fall, reducing inflationary pressure. But firms also save. 
firms do with their profits. They may not wish to spend them on investment in the future or give them away as dividends. They may well save them. There is more reward for saving. So profits are saved and not reinvested. So falling investment spending, again, I falls as part of aggregate demand, which reduces inflationary pressure. So looking back at what we've just covered, can you actually now draw the transmission mechanism to show what happens to inflationary pressure if interest rate falls instead of rising? So see if you can come up with the three channels for consumer spending and the two channels for investment spending if interest rates fall.